I know it could be really intimidating looking at this page right now and seeing all these bubbles, these bright reds, the greens, the blues, the oranges, the yellows, and just being like, what the heck is going on here? But in today's video, I'm going to simplify the liquidity heat map, talk about what that means, how to use it, how to customize it so that it can help give you an edge in the markets and potentially even your own trading. Welcome on in everyone. So today we are looking at the book map liquidity heat map, and I've got it pulled up here for Tesla stock. And this is actually a stock that I tend to trade multiple times per week uh, on a day trade basis. And I love looking at the book map liquidity heat map when I am trading a given stock. And why do I like doing that? Well, hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to understand why, but it gives me a really good view to where the stock may be headed. And when I say may be headed more so at key areas of interest or areas of high liquidity via the heat map. So when it comes to liquidity, what does it actually mean? We are, we're talking about a lot of orders. We're talking about an area of a high volume of orders stacking up in the market at a specified price. When we have low liquidity, we don't have as many orders. And when there's low liquidity, we might see larger spreads, stocks or price action could jump back and forth a bit faster or a bit larger in terms of volatility, but there really aren't a ton of orders going through. High liquidity, tons of orders, the spreads tighten up, and we've got a lot of action. And generally speaking, we might see the time in sales, the amount of orders or the orders coming through like live start to pick up, right? Because there's always someone there matching a buyer with a seller. Boom, 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 high liquidity. So here on book map, what we've got right now in front of us is a look at Tesla's chart as I've got pulled up right here in the top. And what we have is I'm going to focus in, there's a lot of stuff on this chart, but what I'm going to focus in are these colors on the chart. So what we have is essentially this slider up here in the top. If I were to drop down on the slider, I have the options to change colors. So you can customize the colors. I'm going to leave it with this, the bottom color scheme. That seems to work fine for me. I can also dim this or brighten the heat map. So maybe it's too much. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe whatever, whatever fits your needs, whatever floats your boat, go for it. For me, nice and bright, that's fine. I'm happy, I'm just a little bit off that, but that's fine with me. Um, that should you know, get the point across. I should be able to see this pretty quickly, easily, and be able to recognize you know, what I need to recognize fast. Now, this is kind of like your standard piece when you pull up a book map or see people talk about book map or whatever. You know, Your immediate reaction is probably gonna be bubbles, and these crazy colorful bars on the chart, if you will. Now, what we're gonna see here on this chart is this is gonna be, if you look back, it's going through historical liquidity data. And so you can see how price or these volume bubbles is essentially where price has moved and you can customize that, change that. That's potentially for another video. And as price pushes up into some of these levels, we see some aggressive buyers via the big green bubbles coming up into areas of high liquidity, a lot of orders stacking up, maybe a lot of sellers stacking up at this level on Tesla, which actually was around 268. That was earlier this morning. Some big buyers came in, broke through, pushed up, and then eventually fell back down. We then see some liquidity stacking up here down around this just under 267. And then we see Tesla kind of bouncing off that, coming back, just trading in a range for a bit in between areas of higher liquidity and bouncing around. Not a lot of momentum. And today actually happens to be a day where we have a Fed meeting and a rate hike or pause or whatever announcement this afternoon. So with that said, it's potential that market might just trade in a range for a while. And on days like this, using a liquidity heat map could actually be very, very useful to identify what that range is and how that range may move over time. So right now, what do we see as the range? Well, we're ranging between two areas of high liquidity as we speak right now. And right now we've got a lot of liquidity down here towards 267, indicated by the darker or more so the yellows to oranges. Uh, there's a ton up here towards 270. That's way ahead of where we are right now. And then there's some darker oranges right here at around 268. So you're kind of seeing this range in between the two whole dollar levels on Tesla right now that are areas of higher liquidity. And that of course will update and will change over time, but that's an inside view as to where the 
bulk of the orders right now are stacking up and the range. And so if we have momentum and we have, let's say, larger or more aggressive buyers as we come up towards this 268, we could think about maybe breaking through and potentially pushing up to that next level of higher liquidity up towards 268.50, where we have some of those R and we have some of those yellows, those lighter blues to yellows. Okay. And back to that scale, the darker the color on the scale that we have, the lower the liquidity and the brighter or the, I guess, the brighter you go, and then as you get towards red, the closer to red and then dark reds you go, the more liquidity, okay? So when I say darker, like this darker blue and black is low liquidity, and as you get towards the oranges, the yellows, that's higher liquidity, and then the reds, the bright reds up here, that's really high liquidity, and that's what we've got up towards the 270 level. But boom, look at that. As we're speaking, as we're filming this right now, we have a break. So we're bouncing in this range for so long, right? We've got liquidity down here, some levels up here that we're watching right here, 267, 268. And then we had some aggressive sellers, those higher volume bubbles that were red, those came in and now we just broke to the downside and Tesla drops about 50 cents in a matter of seconds here as you push down towards 266.50. Now it's bouncing back a little bit, but we just saw those aggressive sellers come in. And so that's a, an example right there live of liquidity showing you, right, the range that we are in. And then when you get those aggressive sellers or buyers to come in, we can break that range, break through. And now all of a sudden those orders get filled, they get eaten up or they get pulled. And now we have lower liquidity. And so price could move quicker to the downside in this case. And it could do the exact same thing to the upside as we saw a little bit up here. However, However, when we did break up earlier this morning, we broke through this area of stronger liquidity or higher liquidity. We did have a couple of these slightly higher levels just to the north that could have been someone stacking up an order or quickly putting up an order at those levels. And then those levels end up getting filled or then we start to see the rejection back to the downside on Tesla. So what we're able to do is get an inside view into what's going on behind the market, where we have orders stacking up, levels of high and low liquidity, do they mean we have to bounce and range trade there? No. But when we do see that those levels of liquidity are stacking up in a either resistance, support, or a range like today, we're going to need something like an aggressive buyer or seller or multiple to come through to make us or to move us through those levels. And so that's what you want to be paying attention to. And that personally is how I like to use it in my own trading. I like to trade breakouts. And so I'm watching these levels closely. I want to see buyers putting pressure on a level, once those buyers can break that level of liquidity or we can break through and eat through those orders and all of a sudden, like for example, we're breaking down in this case, that could have been an opportunity for a short in my, in my opinion or in my trading. And then I'm looking to play the downside momentum beyond that. So that's an example how I use it, but you can use it a lot of different ways. You can range trade with it. You can use it as support resistance levels. This is a great indicator. It's a great piece of information that I think is really impactful in understanding the market price action and really, really useful in our own trading. I'll leave a link down below this video in the description box to Bookmap if you want to check them out and get set up for free. Uh, outside of that, I use this pretty much every single day. I check in with my own trading and uh, I've been loving it so far. Thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing here to the channel with the thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.